how do you think that creators like Derek from More Plates, More Dates or, or Greg Doucette or someone has changed the way that the internet understands um, hormonal profiles and supplementation? Because since watching a lot of Derek's stuff, since he's become big on YouTube, I have been much more considering the balance that's inside of my body. But I don't, I don't think that that was super common before guys like him were around. Yeah, I, look, Derek's not a scientist by training, but he's done an immense service to the world because no one was talking about this stuff. It was talked about in bodybuilding circles where they talk very openly. It was starting to emerge in testosterone replacement therapy clinics. And then mostly guys were doing this stuff and lying about it, right? They're doing it, but then they don't want to talk about it. Actually, kudos to Joe Rogan, who years ago came out and said, yeah, he decided to start doing TRT and low dose of testosterone. He's already successfully reproduced. And so he, you know, he brought it up and, and you know, it's clear that this is becoming more common. Here, here are some of the general principles that I think, uh, forgive me, Derek, if I get this wrong in terms of what you believe, because I never want to speak for anybody else, but my read of the science and the actual protocols speak to the idea that many people do not need testosterone replacement. Young guys should really avoid doing anabolic steroids. It can really mess up their system, not just physically, not just for the ability to have kids later, but um, get, lead to all sorts of sexual issues and sexual performance issues. Like there needs to be some medical incentive, right? Hypogonadism, for instance. But at the point where someone either has banked sperm or decides they don't want any more kids or is willing to do something like take HCG to maintain testicular and uh, function and spermatogenesis, it's very clear that going with the lowest you know, doctor described, right? I'm not talking about illicit use that the lowest possible dosage of testosterone therapy is going to be better than t for instance, taking 200 milligrams in a one mil injection every two weeks, right? Cause you get these huge increases and then these troughs. So people is this are something that you've learned from Derek. Yes. And in talking with other people and I, I'm no longer doing this. Um, but I, I did a run of it from 45 to, to 46 years old and nothing before that. Um, and I did it because I'm working on a, on a book really that has a whole section on hormone therapies. I wanted to see what it was like. I'll tell you, basically testosterone gives you more energy to work more. Um, if it's done appropriately, right? Maybe that's the, yeah. the secret for Lex. Maybe, maybe Lex homo makes, is just brimming. Maybe he's brimming. And I'll say when I went into it, my, my levels were mid range. They were fine. High to mid range. They were kind of like sevens, eights, but I was doing some supplementation to support that. And I've since gone back to that. It was funny when you say something on the internet, people think that means it's forever, right? I, it is possible to start and come off, right? So, so what I've done. And, and so here's what's, what's relevant here. People are now spacing out, you know, 30 milligrams on Monday, 30 milligrams on Wednesday, 30 milligrams on Friday is like kind of a low reasonable dose. Again, talk to your doctor. These aren't recommended dosages. That's more typical. Another thing that's really important is that people have traditionally blocked estrogen by increases while doing this by taking an aromatase inhibitor. Nolvidex, Arimidex, these kinds of things. That almost often is a bad idea, almost often, because having enough estrogen around allows you to maintain cognitive function and libido. A lot of guys think it's just, you know, and it is true if estrogen is very high and testosterone is very low, it can, libido can suffer. But if testosterone is very high and estrogen is very low, libido can really suffer. So a lot of people who are crushing their estrogen realize that by coming off some of those drugs, they feel far better, far Interesting. better, far better. So most people I know that are doing this are taking low doses of testosterone semi-frequently throughout the week, 20 to 30 milligrams every other day or so. There's a lot of variation around this. And then not doing anything to reduce uh, aromatase, or if they are taking very low doses, not one milligram of Arimidex, but maybe something like 0.1 milligrams of Arimidex every third day or so. Again, not a recommendation. Talk yeah, yeah. to your doctor. The, the smarter clinics are starting to think about this. And actually, I don't have any financial relationship to Derek or to Merrick Health, which is his clinic. But from what I understand, they do a very good job. I did help them design a herbal mostly herbal supplement for testosterone support for people who are not on TRT as things like Tonga Ali Fadoja. But unbeknownst to most people, I, I've not made one penny on that. That was just based on a conversation of the research with him and Dr. Kyle Gillette and a few other people. So estrogen can help maintain libido also, can increase libido. Now, here's something I learned that's really interesting from Peter Atia recently. Women, as we know, make both testosterone and estrogen, and of course, a bunch of other uh, hormones too. 
if they get their blood work back and you were to adjust the units that those hormones are measured in, nanograms per deciliter in some cases, picograms per deciliter in other cases, if you normalize them all to the same nanograms per deciliter, you would find that a healthy woman has more testosterone than she does estrogen. That's right. I asked him this three times. I'm like, you're telling me that women have more testosterone circulating in them than estrogen. He said, absolutely. Now this, maybe there's a, there's a caveat to that during some phase of the menstrual cycle, but that does not mean that their tos- testosterone levels are higher than that of men. But this is remarkable, right? This means that these androgens, testosterone, and, and are doing interesting things in men and in women, and estrogen, as we just described, are doing really interesting things, certainly in women, and in men. So this idea of more testosterone, less estrogen good is always the case. That's simply false. You have to think about whether or not it's a man, whether or not it's a woman, whether or not the goal is more or less, typically people aren't going for less libido, but I suppose it's possible. Some people out there with that. Some people might be highly distracted by an excessive libido, right? That's a different story. But, and then of course, DHT. So I think one of the things that Derek has really contributed to the world, and I think is important for people to know that a lot of the drugs that are used to treat hair loss, finasteride, Propecia, things like that, block DHT receptors, dihydrotestosterone. DHT is responsible for beard growth in the face and for balding, male pattern baldness. People, because they want their hair, will take these drugs. If they take it them in pill form, they're blocking DHT everywhere and they can experience severe defects in libido and sexual performance. Now, before that... It's a choice between your hair and your erection. For a lot of people, it is, right? I mean, for now, there are now topical things, and Derek talks about all this kind of thing. There are topical solutions. He went really, solution. really deep. He goes that. really deep into all this. And what's interesting is, you know, we also can take a step back and say, like, what's the landscape of health information that created this opportunity for a kid in his 20s? By the way, no one knows his last name. Very clever. No one knows his last name. Um, I'll play Derek. It's kind of an avatar of a human, right? <laughs> Although he's real. Um, what created this landscape for this guy to be able to get this information out there, even though he's not a physician, he's not a scientist? And I think what it is is that he saw that there was all this information nested in these very niche communities that no, most people don't want to look like a bodybuilder, yeah. right? And yet what he did was he sort of normalized the discussion about hormones. He normalized the discussion about other things like dopamine and cortisol etc. And what's interesting is that science now is kind of following suit. You know, 10 years ago, a discussion about hormone therapies would never come up in the hallways of, of discussions with my colleagues. Since doing a, an episode of the podcast on optimizing testosterone and estrogen, no fewer than 10 of, I'm not going to name names, but these are serious scientists, and it's a mixture of men and women, have approached me about like, hey, like, what can one do in order to adjust testosterone or estrogen levels? Is um, estrogen therapy for menopause, a useful thing. When should one start? Now, I'm not an endocrinologist, so all I can do is point them in the way of information, but this is an important area, and here's why. Hormones control neuromodulators like dopamine, estrogen, and so on, and those neuromodulators powerfully influence our states of mind. So if your hormones are out of whack, your neuromodulators are going to be out of whack. Typically, the treatment for depression would be to go in and just give a serotonin reuptake inhibitor or well, butrin type dopamine thing. Now, that has its use, but I love this trend now, not towards hormone therapy necessarily, but just toward a thinking, a mindset of how deep in the layers of my biology can I go to create these sort of waves of health that rise up to the level of ability to focus and et cetera. For so many years, it's all been attacked at the surface, kind of the waves uh, on the surface of the ocean. And yet there's this like, we're now talking about the deep tectonic plates movements that are affecting all that in any case. What's happening, people? If you enjoyed that, then press here for the full unedited episode. And don't forget to subscribe. Peace.